For any assessment to be successful, there is a number of factors involved within the planning process. Of course, as an assessor, you need to be organised, you need to be uh, communicating with the learner in advance of the assessment and also to uh, communicate with staff members as well. For example, you might need your own uh, work shift uh, covering, okay, and you also need to organise uh, resources and also uh, where the assessment is going to be uh, taking place. So lots of uh, things that we need to be aware of in the planning stages, okay. I'm just going to pick out just a few of the key areas now which are important when planning your very own assessment. The first criteria is standards and performance criteria. So in other words, um, ourselves as the assessor, we need to know what standards and criteria we are going to be using for the upcoming assessment. We need to be assessing to the latest standards. We need to be checking that the standards we're using are not out of date as well. Of course, we want to be using the, the very latest standards and criteria there. My advice is that you do print off uh, your standards and criteria when assessing and perhaps use a clipboard as well. Um, so you can, of course, make notes. You can map uh, the observation, the learner's performance to the criteria so you can visually see how it's mapped against the, the standards as well. Within uh, the assessment uh, briefing stage, when you first meet uh, the learner, it's very good practice to show them the, the standards that you are going to be assessing against and that does promote understanding there. And finally, um, the assessor must understand which uh, standards and criteria are to be used within uh, the assessment as well. So yourself, you need to be confident uh, with your understanding of the, the criteria or standards. OK, if you're unsure, perhaps speak to a fellow colleague or manager and just have a conversation with them to help you uh, to understand more about uh, the evidence required. Or even you could perhaps shadow uh, a fellow assessor as well. Furthermore, we have evidence requirements. So within the planning stage, you need to think about what the end product uh, looks like, okay, in terms of the learner's performance, okay, uh, the outcome, okay, what is the end result, and also your, your paperwork as well, what you are going to uh, produce, okay, and think about what evidence is required and the, the format as well. OK, so we need to think about whether we as assessors need to take any pictures of the assessment, perhaps on a camera or a phone as well, uh, written. So if you're perhaps writing a report, you need to perhaps know what um, what details are on the report. And um, if so, perhaps how much detail is required as well. You don't want to be uh, writing too much detail, of course, if it's not necessary. Uh, signatures of yourself and the learner and of course dates are important as well. Um, if it's a video assessment, um, perhaps thinking about what uh, recording device you're going to be using, how long the uh, assessment uh, is going to be in terms of how long the re video recording needs to be to be sufficient. So all of those are key factors within the planning stage. Furthermore, uh, we need to think about the assessment methods, okay? So we've looked at the um, the evidence and we need to think about what method is best practice, okay? What uh, assessment method is going to be ideal for the, uh, the situation as well? So as an assessor, you could, of course, uh, choose observations, multiple choice tests, questions, assignments or presentations as well. OK, so you do have to think about which assessment method is going to be most suitable for your course or qualification. OK, if there's a, perhaps a vocational um, career qualification such as hairdressing, you might be more reliant on observations here. So seeing the actual learner, can they perform uh, the skill of cutting hair, for example, uh, meeting clients, so of course, all that customer care um, is going to be useful throughout an observation format. OK, uh, assignments could, of course, be more theory based as well, um, whereas multiple choice tests um, again, could be um, for more vocational subjects, of course, as well. Furthermore, we have communication with learner and others involved. OK, so we, of course, need to have clear communication uh, with the learner in regards to arranging 
um, the assessment so they're comfortable with the time, the date, the location, what do they need to bring to the assessments as well, very important. Um, it could be PPE as well, so are they going to bring uh, their own clothing, equipment, what do they need to come uh, dressed in, for example? Um, are you going to be supplying them with any equipment as well? And also, of course, to uh, speak to staff members as well here, just to have a discussion about um, where the assessment will take place. Once again, who is going to be perhaps covering for you if it's during uh, a work day. And also we need to think about any learner targets as well. Um, so here we're, we're saying to the learner in advance, perhaps what targets they need to be working on. Is there something that they were uh, provided in the last assessment that they need to be working on? So uh, we're looking at have they sort of learnt from their previous assessments and finally, shift patterns as well. Okay, if you're working uh, with colleagues, uh, perhaps a learner who's working at a particular shift, uh, we need to be kind uh, to the, the learner and we need to, to manage an assessment day, a time, which um, is convenient for them. Okay, we don't want to arrange perhaps an early assessment when they've come off uh, a night shift the day before. So we do need to be quite thoughtful here. So for this criteria, what I would like for you to do is just to summarise uh, the key factors here when planning assessments, okay? Um, so we are looking for either examples in your current or your future um, assessment role.